So guys, in this uh, video, we wanted to make this video because Halloween and Samhain is coming upon us. And already, many high-level Luciferian Satanists are preparing for this. Five to six weeks ahead. And so it's already been happening. I can feel this darkness. I feel feel it. I feel the attacks of Satan. And I know he doesn't want us to make this video. Absolutely. Because we have God with us. And so I would first like to say that the, the it has Halloween has been around for a long time. It's really been popularized throughout the 20th century. But it has very ancient traditions. But as we see, it is garbed with traditions that make it look fun, that make it look inviting, and, and like it's a family time. But that's how the devil works. He always is an angel of light. But we know God says that, woe well, to those that make light, you know, into darkness, darkness to light. And... um that can lead to serious consequences. And also God says for us not to participate in, in wicked things in the ways of the heathen. And so I uh, would love for us to go down this list that I have. That I, I've um, been blessed and honored to have this book called um, Like Lambs to the Slaughter. Um, and we'll start off first. With, Why don't you show it, Seth? Yeah, absolutely. Just show it. Your child and the occult like lambs to the slaughter. And we know... And who's, the author? who's the author, Zach? Jo Johanna Michelson. Okay. Yeah. Definitely look into her and, and read her books, like The Beautiful Side of Evil. Um, You know, it starts out with the children, right? And we know children, Satan is definitely after and we know from previous Satanists, like uh, Satanists like Karl Marx and, and other Satanists, they they know, or like Hitler, they know if they can have the youth, they have society as a whole. They have the world in their hands. And so the first thing is to go after the youth, to indoctrinate them into the occult. And so um, I don't know about you, Kim and Keith. Uh, what your experiences are, um, Kim? I know your children are quite young. Are they? Are they? They're homeschooled, or do they go to regular schools? Uh, no, I'll go ahead and just give a. Is it okay if I do this in the beginning <laughs> rather than the end? Yes, please do. Uh, yeah. So my situation with my children, Halloween. So back when I didn't believe that Satan was real, Halloween to me was cool. It was fun. You know, I was lived in L.A. and I hung out um, with the gay community out there, and I still have a lot of gay friends that I love dearly. But, you know, we like to dress up and do crazy things year round. We thought Halloween was amateur night because <laughs> we were punks, right? And um, we held up this like huge parade, and like Halloween was just like cool. It was fun. It was, you know, just a, a night where people felt like they could do and be things that they wouldn't typically be. And it gave them like a weird sense of freedom or whatever. Whereas I just went too far with that and spent my whole life living that way, completely shameless. Um, but then when I had kids and came to the Lord and started reading the Bible, really the difference is the Bible. Once I started reading the Bible, because I still thought Halloween was fun when I had Oscar and Azzy. But the more I started reading the Bible, the more I started coming to know Jesus, the more I started getting into um, the histories of everything, I started to recognize how deeply messed up Halloween is. <laughs> and the and when I started to understand the state of the dead and that God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead, and you see all these gruesome and the character of God, like as I come to know the character of God, you see people putting skeletons out everywhere like it's so fun and you know, like honoring and parading death around like it's something to be proud of. Or, you know, when we all die. But anyways, like 
and with my kids especially is like why are we showing our children like serial killers and dressing them up as like chucky and and you know all these halloween costumes skeletons vampires like vampires even though they're not technically real live off the blood live off the life of others frankenstein is like this creepy creation brought back from the dead which means that god didn't revive him it was like some weird scientist and you just like look through all these halloween characters and none of them are from god and then witches you know i watched a lot of witch stuff because i found it kind of interesting and i had a friend that dabbled into witchcraft and i was like leave me out of that <laughs> but i'm pretty sure he probably has tried to cast spells on me and whatever and whatever but um anyways the and the more i come to know god the more i can recognize the the things that i have a little bit of experience with and see like the darkness in it and um but like witches serve satan they really do and when you when you watch all these shows that we watched as kids like there's that show witches as a kid where the witches seem like these nice ladies and giving kids candy and then they go have their witch meeting, take off their mask and they're creepy and scary and they eat children and they do weird things. And all this just seems like, you know, just kind of random, like that can't be true. It's just make believe, you know, but it is true <laughs> in a sense. Like, I don't know if witches take off their faces and, but Salem, the, um, the TV series Salem, I watched that not long before I got married Eddie and converted and that goes into kind of darker witchcraft. Um, but like, and basically like there was this one, the lead, she got pregnant. It was in the, it was during a time when women don't get pregnant outside of marriage. Right. And her dude went off to war or whatever. And so she went and made a deal with the devil and the devil came and like took her baby and she became a witch and they have like their familiars and it goes into kind of the darker, more honest look into witchcraft and um and but the thing is is like as you watch these shows they're really revealing quite a bit of truth about what's really going on but then they dress it up with songs and stuff and hocus pocus like have you guys seen hocus pocus with the sanderson sisters and you know i put a spell on you and now you're mine and like everyone thinks it's so awesome. But like when you think about it, that's what they're doing. I put a spell on you and now you're mine. And in that one, they like basically do a, a spell on children and then suck like the soul out of them. Like sucks the life out of them, right? That, it doesn't show them like actually eating or sacrificing a child, but it shows them like sucking the life out of them. And the thing is, is like the more you watch this stuff, like you realize like this really isn't pretend, you know, like we present it as like this this you know make believe world but it's really got so much truth behind it that it's kind of terrifying and thinking back on all the scary movies i watched and all the creepy crap and all all that stuff and realizing that it really all has a demonic background behind it okay so now here's my situation with my children i am kind of a single man out in my faith my husband, my family, you know, I was raised in Halloween. I was raised in a Christian home that's totally fine with Halloween. They think it's fun. They don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's all, you know, like, you know, as long as it's cute and whatever, it's fine. My mom, had, like, makes these little witches and puts them all over her house. And, you know, she <laughs> loves Jesus, you know. And I, like, I say stuff, um, you know, likes to do all the decorations. Anyways, and my husband was raised in it, too. I think he kind of sees my point that, you know, it's kind of creepy and um and is somewhat supportive of me but also at the same time is worried about me making our kids so weird that they can't operate in the world you know which is kind of what happens when you come to god but anyway so um so at this point i'm just being very honest with my children in the first couple years you know i my children are not allowed to wear costumes that are scary that have anything to do with with witches or with zombies or with dead things they can dress up as you know, this year, as he's going to dress up as the Little Mermaid, Oscar's going to be Pikachu, and Edward's going to be a cat. So I let them do costumes, and then I'm just very honest with them, and I talk with them. I try to get them thinking, you know, let them know who God is, and does God want us to hurt each other? No. Well, why are we showing things where people are dead in the lawn, or why are we talking about a vampire? That Do vampires, are they nice to people, or do they hurt people? They hurt people. Are they are vampires from God. So getting them to think about things in that way and trying to help develop their minds so they can discern 
And that's really all I know how to do at the point I'm at. And then my son thinks that stuff is scary and I don't let them watch Halloween stuff as much as I can, but I know they still get it at school. I know they still get it from their grandparents. I know that it still comes up everywhere they go. There's no way I can pull them out of it. And the thing is, is like, God didn't pull us out of it either. We're in the thick of it. Right. And so, so my kids still participate in Halloween a little bit, which I, if I could, I would lock them in a closet for the entire month, but it doesn't work that way. Um, and, but I hate Halloween and I hate it more and more. And that like to like just everything, it's the, everything about it. And then hearing my mom read my daughter, a Halloween book, like it just, you know, and I've mentioned things, but people just keep staying where they're at and they don't really think about it. And it's just kind of, and all I can do is be an example and try to teach my kids. And this year, my husband, my son, um, we were going through like a calendar of January through December and like. February is the month of love has all these little hearts and October has ghosts and houses and creepy stuff on it. And he said to me this year, and I thought it was so cute and I was so excited. And we just keep praying because I pray with them every night too. So I pray, I have them pray for the Holy spirit like every day. And I think that's important too. But he was, um, he said, mom, why wasn't I born in the month of with the hearts and with love? Why'd I have to be born in the scary month? <laughs> and I was like, well, you don't have over. To. Yeah. They were born in October. So, um, and I was like, well, honey, you don't have to. So, so, and I want my, and like, I don't want my kids to hate God because they weren't able to do anything that they thought was fun. Right. Because it's, it's triggered that way. Right. To where, and the thing too, is like when kids turn one, they get their first cake, they get their smash cake and you just start pumping them full of sugar. And then all the time we're just pumping our kids full of sugar and every holiday it's sugar, sugar, Halloween, they get to go get candy. They get to dress up in a costume. Why wouldn't they want to do it? And then you tell them they can't do it. And then if you hear that it's about God, then God's restrictive. God's trying to take things away from me. This is more fun. Like I know, cause that's who, how I used to view God when I was little. And I don't want to put that back on my kids. So I keep just trying to explain to them. God wants us to be loving. Halloween is teaching us to not be nice. And I want you guys to think through these things and, you know, I'm going to let them participate. And then as they get older and older, then I want to give them more and more true information, like really show them what, the truth about witches really show them some of these things. And if that doesn't scare them out of it, then I don't know what would, because once I've come to understand what's really happening to children, what's really going on behind the scenes, I think if the world had any clue what was really happening, they would be horrified. And when truth is revealed, when Jesus Christ comes and people see the truth of all these things, I think the shame that's going to be there when they recognize they participated in it is going to be so excruciating, so overwhelming, which is why Christ bore our sins, because the reality of it is going to be so crazy how deeply deceived we all have been, you know? So anyways, that's my situation with life and my kids is like, I don't know how to pull them out of it all the way. I just am trying to teach them to think for themselves, but we covered our heart. We covered our lawn and hearts and a big blow up sign that says love. And so when people come to our house, we're going to be the love house and not the creepy, scary house, you know? And so I still wanted to like do rituals with my kids to where we can dress up. We can, we can do things, but we're going to do it for God. We're going to do it for love. We don't need to do scary things. We don't have to do the same thing the world does, but I know they're still going to go trick or treat a little bit. And they still go to school and learn about stuff. And I tell them, like, you don't go be mean to your friends because they like Halloween because that's not Christian either, you know? So it's like a weird balance with a, with a child of, like, how do I do this, God? I don't know. How can I keep my children out of idolatry when the whole world is, is flaunting it everywhere, you know? And that's the best that I've come to at this place. And I don't know if it's right or if it's wrong, but I know that God knows the situation that we're in as people and he wants to help us go through it and come out of it as best as we can i don't think that god's just expecting us to like you know like i'd love to go parade against it if i didn't have kids i probably would but i do the best i can do is try to just drop little seeds that the holy spirit can help 
expand and grow in people and help them wake up. But that's where I am. So, you know, God, God meets us in the middle, right? So like, like you said, Kim, we're in the thick of it. You know, God knows what we're going through. Uh, it's like our, our flesh is at enmity with God. We have to deal with this. We have to deal with the world. God understands. Jesus understands the, the weight on us. And so Jesus understands that. And so I, I, God under like the Holy Spirit's working and all you can do is your best to surrender yourself to God daily and ask for help and just do your best. I, I see, I mean, I'm not a parent, but I, you know, if I were in your shoes, I honestly, I'm quite proud of you. And, um, you know, this is just the start. And then as they grow and mature, you can reveal more and, um, they'll, they'll get it. They'll get it. So you're on the right track, at least in my eyes. I'm just a man, but I know God loves you. He loves his, your children. He has his angels with you and your family. And you're you're going to be all right. And I, I know you're going to do the right thing. And your kids are, are going to get through this as well in these dark times. 